We're going to start off our service with a song as everyone finds their way to their seats. It is time for worship. Let's start with Get Right Church. Oh, Get Right Church this should be the first song here. Let's see. There we go. Let us sing. There you go. Get right, church, and let's go home. Get right, church, and let's go home. Get right, church, you better get right, church. Come on now, get right, church, and let's go home. I'm going home on the morning train. Well, I'm going home on the morning train. I'm going home. I'm going home. I'm going home on the morning train. That evening train might be too late. Evening train might be too late. Evening train. Evening train. Well, evening train might be too late. So back, back train and get your load. Well, back, back train and get your load. Back, back train, you better back, back train. Come on now, back, back train and get your load. So get right, church, and let's go home. Get right, church, and let's go home. Get right, church, you better get right, church. We need to get right, church, and let's go home. Good morning, church family. Good to see everyone. Welcome visitors. Welcome those joining us online. Um, I'll have uh, announcements and information to share uh, after uh, towards the end of our service. But what a wonderful day, wonderful fall day to be together, uh, to worship God in spirit and truth and just to fellowship. So let's continue with our service and be blessed. Sweet by and by. I've been dealing with allergies from fall, and so if I, don't, if I just stop singing, just keep going without me. <clears throat> Sweet by and by. <clears throat> There's a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we can see it afar. For the Father waits over the way To prepare us a dwelling place there In the sweet by and by We shall meet on that beautiful shore In the sweet by and by by we shall meet on that beautiful shore we shall sing on that beautiful shore the melodious song of the blessed and our spirits shall sorrow no more not a sigh for the blessed sing of rest in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore to our bountiful Father above, we will offer a tribute and praise for the glorious gift of His love and the blessing that hallows our days in the sweet. By and by, 
we shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore <clears throat> where could I go but to the Lord this one there we go living below in this old sinful world hardly a comfort can afford striving alone to face temptation stores where could i go but to the lord where could i go Oh, where could I go, seeking a refuge for my soul, needing a friend to save me in the end? Why don't you tell me where could I go but to the Lord? Neighbors are kind. I love them, everyone. We get along in sweet accord. When my soul needs manna from above, where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go? Oh, where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul, needing a friend. Why don't you tell me where could I go but to the Lord? Life here is grand with friends I love so dear. Comfort I get from God's own word. Yet when I face the chilling hands of death, where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go? Oh, where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul, needing a friend to save me in the end. Where could I go but to the Lord? At this time, we're going to have our scripture reading from Jesse Cruz. <clears throat> Morning, church. Today's uh, scripture reading is coming from John chapter 6, verses 33 through 35. And it reads, For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, always give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Will you pray with me, please? Heavenly Father, we come to you today thankful for your Son who sacrificed himself on the cross for our sins. Thankful for our opportunity here to worship today on this wonderful day. I personally want to thank you for bringing my family back to health and thank you for the support of this church and their prayers. We ask you to be with those that are in mourning, and the families of loved ones that have passed away. Thankful for the guests that we have today and here. May you be with this church. May you be with the leaders of this church and stand as he delivers this message today. May we apply it to our lives. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, the next few songs are going to focus on the Lord's Supper, but don't panic. We're not going to have the Lord's Supper before the sermon. So we are going to have the Lord's Supper, but today it's going to be after Sand's sermon. So that was intentional. <clears throat> Lamb of God. <clears throat> you.
Your only Son, no sin to hide, but you have sent Him from your side to walk upon this guilty side and to become the Lamb of God. O Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God, I love the Holy Lamb of God. O wash me in His precious blood, my Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. Your gift of love they crucified. They laughed and scorned him as he died. The humble king they named a fraud and sacrificed the Lamb of God. O Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God, I love the Holy Lamb of God. O wash me in my Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. I was so lost, I should have died, but you have brought me to your side, to be led by your staff and rod, and to be called the Lamb of God. O Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God, I love the Holy Lamb of God. Oh, wash me in His precious blood. My Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. <clears throat> Glory to His name. 475. I need a drink here. Down at the cross where my Savior died Down where from cleansing from sin I cried There to my heart was the blood applied Was singing glory to His name Glory to His name Precious name, glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. We're singing glory to his name. I am so wondrously saved from sin. Jesus so sweetly abides within There at the cross where he took me in We're singing glory to his name Glory to his name, his precious name Glory to his name there harm was the blood of life we're singing glory to his name oh precious fountain that saves from sin i am so glad i have entered in 
There Jesus saves me and keep me clean. We're singing glory to his name. Glory to his name, his precious name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Keep singing glory to his name. Well, good morning, church. Good to see everybody here. We are changing the order up just a little bit today, and that's because the sermon topic is about the Lord's Supper. So I thought it'd be weird to have it and then talk about it. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about it this time, and then we'll have the Lord's Supper together and celebrate that. So don't worry, we're not doing this permanently, just a one-week change so that we the, the sermon can then lead a, up to that communion time together. Because we have been talking about how the Son of Man came eating and drinking. And we've been talking about this topic for several weeks. Uh, Matthew chapter 11, verse 19 tells us that one of the reasons Jesus came to earth was to eat and drink with people. And in other words, what the whole point of that is, it's, it's such a social thing. Jesus wants to come to get to know you. He wanted to come to offer friendship, closeness, and intimacy with you. And he wanted to come to give uh, personal time spent with you, to share your lives together. Because that's what happens when you eat meals together. Now, I also want to mention it this time. Everyone take note. Listen up. All of you online, listen up. On October 29th, we're having our fifth Sunday fellowship. Nothing new there. But on October 29th, we're asking everybody to maybe bring a little extra. And we also have many members that uh, even, they won't even stay for the potluck. You have make plans, you go elsewhere. Not this time. We want everyone to come because what we're going to do is we're going to be like Jesus. And we're going to invite all of the community. We're going to advertise it at the clothing closets. We're going to put it on our sign. We're going to ask the whole community to come and join us for this meal. Because we need to be like Jesus. We need to reach out to the lost. We need to get to know them. We need to offer them friendship and closeness and intimacy. We want to let them know. We want to spend time with you. And maybe they won't come here for worship. Maybe that's too intimidating. But maybe we can sit down and share a meal with them. And so that's going to be our focus. On October 29th, that fifth Sunday fellowship, invite your friends that maybe you normally wouldn't come. Invite those people that maybe not won't come. We want to share a meal together. And we also ask, because I, I, we, I've been here a long time now. I know how you guys do. When we have a fifth Sunday potluck, we grab our food and we sit with our friends. We sit with our buddies. Not this time. This time, we want you to sit with someone you don't know. We want you to grab that, that food that you get the potluck and sit with somebody you never talked to, maybe you've never seen, and we want you to get to know them. Develop a friendship. Share your lives. Get to know each other. That's going to be our focus. Are we excited about October 29th? Yes. That's what we want to hear. So let's all make our plans now. If you have vacations, change it. Come here October 29th. Because we're going to practice all this sermon series that we've been talking about. Sharing the meal with Christ. We're going to share with our community. So get the word out. Let people know that Jesus came to eat and drink. And we're going to do the same. As we've been looking at, he came to eat and drink with tax collectors. In Luke chapter 5, we saw where Jesus came to eat with Simon the Pharisee and the sinful woman. Who had that real awkward experience. And then we, we saw the meal with over 5,000 people. It's more like probably 10,000 when you add all the women and the children, but it's 5,000 men. Then we saw where the Pharisees uh, invited this man with dropsy just to kind of, and had this big meal, invited Jesus to kind of set him up. We saw all that one. And then last week we saw where Jesus looked at Zacchaeus and invited himself. He said, I got to come to your place. You're the kind of guy I want to hang with. I want to eat a meal with you. I want to stay in your place with you. Let's go. And so that's what we looked at last week. This week brings us to Luke chapter 22. And Luke chapter 22 is the installation or the beginning of the Lord's 
Supper. You talk about the ultimate meal. And that's what we're going to be looking at today. If you have your Bibles, turn to Luke chapter 22, in verses 7 through 13. Luke writes, Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. Where do you want us to prepare for it? They asked. He replied, As you enter the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him to the house that he enters, and say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, all furnished. Make preparations there. They left and found things just as Jesus had told them, so they prepared the Passover. So the day of the unleavened bread came. The day of the the Passover is beginning here. And and this this, this meal, you think of all the meals. Like I said, all of Luke is about Jesus having meals with people, right? We've we've seen that as we go through this sermon series. But of all the meals, this one had to have been the most emotional, the most moving meal that Jesus was going to have on on this earth. Because this was a commemoration. This was the beginning of something that was going to last till the end of time. What we do every week, He is beginning here. And He understands all the meaning of it. Even if we don't, He understands all the meaning of it. The Passover was the initial, the the whole Old Testament Passover thing, the meal of the Passover, was to celebrate the deliverance of Israel from Egypt. That's what it was about. It was about being delivered. The beginning of a nation. A nation that once was slaves owned by another nation. Now they're their own people who has been delivered and has been saved with the blood of the Lamb. It's that act of redemption. The Passover celebrated the very act of redemption in the Old Testament. And now, Jesus, in Luke 22 is ending that whole concept. A concept that's been around for thousands of years. He's saying there's a new act of redemption. We've been celebrating this for thousands of years. But now there's something new and better. And I want you to remember a new ceremony. Now we're not going to celebrate Passover once a year. We're not going to just remember and have a once an annual. We're going to have a weekly ceremony that remembers the great redemption that Jesus offers you. The deliverance that Jesus gives you. And so he said, said, let's make preparations for the meal. Now you ladies understand this. Think about Thanksgiving meal, Christmas meal. You guys prepared for days for that. I know women that two, three days before, they're starting to bake their Christmas pies. They're already starting to make preparations right well that's the kind of meal when when you have a big celebratory meal it takes preparation and Jesus said you guys need to prepare for this Passover meal because he understood the importance of it Jesus knew they didn't they may not have understood what was coming but Jesus knew how emotional and how important this meal was so he says you guys need to prepare for this and he says he, he he tells them there's a man carrying a pitcher of water. You're going to go into this town? Because they, they said, well, where are we got to prepare? you got to have a place. And where do you want us to go? And he said, well, follow the guy with the pitcher of water. And now you may think, well, big deal. But that was a very unusual sight. we got to understand the concept of, the, of what's going on in the culture of that time. Carrying a pitcher was considered woman's work. Men didn't carry pitchers of water in that culture. That would have been a, an effeminate thing. That would, have been, that would have been something you made fun of. Like, dude, aren't you manlier than that? You're doing woman's work, right? That was that kind of culture. Only a woman would carry a, a pitcher of water. Now, does that mean men didn't carry water? Well, of course they carried water. But in that culture, in that society, if a man was carrying any kind of liquids, whether it was water or wine or whatever, they did carry it in animal skins. They carried it in containers of animal skins. So that was a manly thing to do. The women, they didn't carry animal skins. They carried the pitchers of water. 
So to see, to walk into a town and to see a guy carrying water, that would stand out, okay? That's a little different. That's pretty distinctive. That's not going to happen. And so this is a sign that would have been very obvious to see. This would have stuck out like a sore thumb. And Jesus is saying, this miracle is not going to be hard to find. This isn't some secretive thing. It's going to stick out. You're going to be able to find this one pretty quick. It was seen as weird for a man to carry a jar of water. So it was seen as someone purposely trying to break tradition and norms of the time is how that would have been viewed. So Jesus said, find this guy. Follow him. Go in the same place he goes. That's where we're going to have this meal. Because oh, this meal is breaking thousands of years of tradition. So why not start it with the sign that breaks the current norm? Isn't that, isn't that amazing what Jesus does? He says, I want you to find a guy with water. How weird in that culture. But he's saying everything is going to be different, including what you see. Everything's going to be different. This meal is going to be different in than anything you've ever known. And it even starts with the first sign. Now also, what is missing here at this Passover meal? Because if you notice back up there in verse 7, it said, Then came the day on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. Was that, Did they have a lamb at this meal? Oh, they did. <laughs> but it wasn't the lamb you're thinking of. What's missing at this meal is a physical lamb. Now, the reason you know, for thousands of years, you have a lamb with the Passover meal. But this meal is different. Why wasn't there an actual lamb? Because Jesus is the sacrificial lamb. Jesus, this time, is going to replace thousands of years of, of dead animals. He's saying, my blood is going to be the one that causes the deliverance. See, back in the Old Testament, you put the blood of the lamb over the doorpost, right? And the angel of death passed over. And so that blood of the lamb saved. Jesus says, my blood's the one that's going to save this time. Well, you see what Jesus, he's, he's revolutionary. He's changing everything. Jesus is saying, this Passover thing that we're celebrating, it's all going to be new now. I'm the sacrifice. I'm the sacrifice. I don't know if the apostles got all this. I, I don't think they got all of this a long time down the road. But Jesus is Jesus understands it all. That's why I said this has got to be such such an emotional thing. He knows it's time for him to die. He knows it's time for his body to be broken. He knows it's time for his blood to shed. And so, man, this meal, can you imagine the importance of this meal to Jesus? He's changing. Thousands of years of human tradition. He's going to be sacrificed for his people. This is the last meal he's going to share on earth with these people. There's a lot of emotion here. Look at verse uh, 14 through 18 together. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table. And he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Wow, what a passionate moment for Jesus here. Do you realize what he's saying? The hour has come. This is the last meal I get to enjoy with my apostles. And he says, I have eagerly desired. This is a time for him to say goodbye to his apostles. He's arrived at the central reason why he came. He came to be a sacrifice for me and for you. And it's come down to this meal time. It's time to institute the new covenant that's going to last for all the rest of time. Today, in Lansing, Michigan, we as brothers and sisters gather as a family to partake of the Lord's Supper because of what Jesus is doing at this meal. This is a special meal. He's introducing a brand new covenant. And he says, I've eagerly desired it. Some of your, some of your other translations, the NIV says eagerly desired 
the other translation say, with fervent desire, I have desired to eat with you. This is the meal of all meals. When we talk about Jesus and eating a meal together, Jesus came to eat and drink. This is the one that he has been looking forward to the most. This is the meal that, that it, with, it seems like his whole being is climaxing for. He is here at the, to, to do what he was meant to do. This is the meal of all meals. That's why we don't take it lightly. We, I think sometimes the Lord's Supper, we do it every week, and maybe it gets rote, maybe it gets tradition, and we kind of look, boy, it wasn't tradition to Jesus. He couldn't wait for it. He fervently desired it. Do we wake up in the morning and say, I can't wait to get to church and have a meal with my brothers and with my sisters and, and commemorate what Jesus has done? We need to look at Jesus' example here. He had a fervent, he couldn't wait to eat with his followers. This is the most important meal that there is. And then he says, he tells the apostles, he says, I won't eat again until when? He says, I won't eat again until all the people are gathered with me again in heaven. Did you see that? He says, I, for I tell you, verse 18, I will not drink again until the kingdom of God has come. He says, I'm not going to participate. I'm not going to have any more meals like this until someday we're all in heaven. He's waiting for all of his people. Jesus, right now, he's waiting for all of his people to be gathered into heaven. And then we're going to have a grand meal. Woo, isn't that exciting? All the loved ones who have gone before, your parents who have died, your friends who have got, your children who have died before, they're all going to just have this great feast in heaven. And Jesus said, that's the next big meal I'm going to have. Then there's going to be a great supper, the marriage supper of the Lamb. This is talked about in Revelation 19.9. In Revelation 19.9, the angel said to me, write this, blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. And he added, these are the true words of God. Christians, when we live a life of dedication, when we live a life of hope, and we live a life of faith, boy, we can't wait for that great banquet in the sky. That day when we're going to eat with Jesus and all the brothers and sisters. What a meal. There's not going to be any crying. That's going to be an incredible party. There's not going to be any goodbyes, see you later. What a banquet. What a party. And it's going to be for all time. And that's what Jesus says. He says, with this meal, I won't eat again until that meal comes. Right. So he, this is the fulfillment in heaven that Jesus is longing for. Everyone together in heaven celebrating the marriage between Jesus and his bride, the church. Are you ready for that great meal? That's what we do. When we come in here and we partake of the Lord's Supper, what we're saying is, Jesus, I remember you. I know what you did. Your blood is the sacrifice. I, your body that was killed. I know what you did for me, Lord. I remember it. And so therefore, I know you've cleansed me and I can have hope. I can know that someday... I'm going to be with you eating that grand meal in heaven. That's what the Lord's Supper is about. It's not something we should just take lightly. It's not something we should excuse away. That's something exciting. Boy, when we get that cup this morning, we're going to pull back that little piece of plastic. Can't wait to get to that bread because that's what it's saying. I can't wait to be with you and eat a, that meal with you in heaven, Lord. I eat this meal now to remember your promise, to remember the new covenant you give. Are you making preparations for that meal right now? Jesus, that's what life is. Life is a preparation for the great meal. And that's what you, are you prepared? 
If you're not prepared, maybe you need to get baptized today. Maybe you need to start ba- maybe you need to start getting into the word of God and building your faith. And so you can believe in Christ and confess to everybody, I believe Jesus is my uh, uh, my savior. He is the Lord, he's the son of God. I truly believe it. And when you make that confession and you say I want to give my life to him, I want to stop living like the world does. And you tra- change to him. And you're baptized into him. Oh, you've just made preparations for that big meal. We eat a meal together every week called the Lord's Supper. It's to remember Jesus in the meal that he instituted here in Luke 22. But that is just a mere shadow of the feast that awaits us in heaven. It reminds us that there's a great banquet ahead. So as we partake of the Lord's Supper, yes, we remember the sacrifice. We remember Him hanging on the cross. But we just don't remember all the sadness of the cross. Don't stop in just all the sacrifice. Because He raised from the dead. And He's preparing a great banquet for us. Look at 19 through 20. 19 through 20 says, He took bread, gave thanks, and broke it. And gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, The cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. (coughs) The new covenant. What a beautiful phrase from Jesus Christ. This is the new covenant. Jesus has completely reinterpreted the entire Passover. For thousands of years, the bread was meant to signify the affliction that the Jews had to endure in the land of Egypt. And when they ate it, they remembered how many slave bodies were busted up. But now, they they ate it and they remembered that. But now, the bread has a whole new significance. Now it's not about remembering Israel in the past. Now it's about remembering Christ. The Passover in the Old Testament created a brand new nation made of a slave mob that was freed from Egypt. And they became a nation. Well, guess what? This new covenant, it created a new nation too. We're a nation of Christ. That's what the church is. It's the nation of people that belong to Jesus Christ. A people united in believing that He is the Savior. That's what the new covenant is. A nation that remembers and trusts in the sacrifice of that lamb. The focus is no longer on Israel, but it's upon Jesus. The cup, it's the new covenant. It's the new saving blood. It replaces all those animals. We don't have to slaughter animals anymore and sprinkle their blood around or put it on doorposts. We don't have to slaughter all those animals and making, inspecting and making sure they're, they're without blemish and all those kinds of things because Jesus was the perfect lamb who has been slaughtered once and for all he took care of every sin you will commit and have commit that's the new covenant you now will have my blood that will wash me that washes us white as snow that makes us pure that's what we're going to be remembering when we partake the Lord's Supper this morning That fact that His blood, when we partake of that grape juice this morning, we open that cup, we need to remember that Christ's blood has made us sinless. Not that we're sinless, He made us sinless because of His blood. And then He said, He said, this cup, the new covenant, my blood, which is poured out for you. Jesus said, it's for you. What an exciting thing. Because who partook partook in Passover? Only Israel. Only Jews. No Gentiles did. Jesus said, nope, this is for you. He didn't even define the you. Because why? Every one of you is a you. It doesn't matter if you're Jew, Gentile, whatever. Doesn't matter if you're black, white, whatever. Doesn't matter. If you're a human being, God has created you, this meal is for you. Anyone who wants to have fellowship with God is invited to partake in this meal together. It's no longer about just one nation. It's no longer about Israelites. It's no longer about a preferred nation. No, 
That stuff's gone. Jesus said, this is a new covenant today. And it's for all of you. It's for all of you who are sinners. It's for all of you Gentiles. It's for all of you that can't follow the law. It's for all you lawbreakers. It's for you that hurt, that have grief, who labor and who suffer. It's for those that are seeking peace in life. It's for those who want to get rid of conflict and arguments and have peace in their life and have love in their life. That's what this meal's about. And it's for you. That is the meal that we're going to partake in. That is the meal that we're about to engage in. And I hope you're fervently excited because Christ was. This meal says, I believe in Jesus, I'm a follower of Him, and I participate in this meal with Him because I want to look forward to the best meal that's coming ever. And that's the lesson for you this morning. Let's take communion together. Is there anyone that needs prayer requests or needs to come forward or wants to be? Oh, we're going to do that after? All right, mess me up. So we're going to do a song. So this ain't the invitation song? Okay. Well, I'll sing a song. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. You're always welcome to come forward anytime you want. <clears throat> what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fountain I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus For my part in this I see Nothing but the blood of Jesus For my cleansing this my plea Nothing but the blood of Jesus Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fountain I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing can for sin atone. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Not a good that I have done. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fountain I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Stan, I want to thank you for that very, very inspirational lesson. And as we come to this time for the Lord's Supper, we think about what Stan says, and it's, as I think about that, a song comes to mind. And the name of the song is, is uh, 962 in your book is, were you there? And in, in some of the uh, verses for that song, were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Were you there when he rose up from the grave? And then the last verse of that song is, it's either going to be this last verse or it's going to be another verse that I'm going to add. Uh, the last verse is, I'll be there when the Savior calls my name. Or it's going to be, I'll be there when he says, depart from me, I know you not. 
Now is the time that we remember him. We take the time to remember him. It's either we, we accept him and accept the blood that he shed, or we are there to crucify him all over again. We make that decision. And I choose, and I know that all of us here choose to remember him. And as we take of this supper, let us do this in remembrance of him. And in Luke chapter 22, just taken from Stan's lesson, uh, beginning with verse 20, it says, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, beginning with verse 19, uh, he took the bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us bow. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, so much for the sacrifice of your Son, Father, that you gave to die on the cross. And as we take of this bread, Father, to represent his body, Father, let us do so in remembrance, in stark remembrance of that day, of that, that dreadful day, but at the same time that joyous day, Father, because we know by that day we can spend eternity, or we have the opportunity to spend eternity with you in glory. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Then in the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. But in the hand of him who is going to betray me is with mine on the table. Let us bow. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, again we come to you, Father, we come to you thanking you so much for this cup which represents thy son's shed blood. And as we partake of this cup, Father, let us do so with clean hands and a pure heart, Father. And let us do so in remembrance of your son. Thank you so much. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. This concludes the Lord's Supper, and now is that time of our service which we have for the collection of the saints. And this is our opportunity to just give back just a small portion of that which the Lord has so richly blessed us with. And, and let us do so, let us do so with clean hands and pure hearts this way. But not only clean hands and pure hearts, a generous heart. Uh, let us know that everything we do, every little bit we give, God gives back to us more than generously. And let us be generous in our giving because he who soweth sparingly reaps sparingly. He who giveth generally will, uh, uh, generously will reap generously. Let us bow. 
Our most gracious Heavenly Father, again, we come to you with an opportunity, an opportunity to give back, a give back just a small, tiny portion of that which you have given us, Father. But we know that if we give, with, we give with a Lord loving, joyous heart, Father, that we cannot give back to you more than you give us, Father. And, and we just thank you because you bless us in so many ways. And we just pray that you will continue those blessings. But we also would like to just pray that you accept our, our generously giving and that we open up our hearts to giving more on a daily basis, Father. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you, brothers and sisters of Christ. I enjoyed having that meal with you and the meal of Christ together. We uh, look forward to it every week. The Lord's Supper is the, the highlight, of the, the most important part of our worship together. And it was a great meal. Thank you for my, very much. This is a time also where now we get into our, what, I, what I refer to as the family time. When, when we offer an invitation for anyone who wants to join our family, who wants to join into the family of Christ, you can come forward and, and make your confession. And we have our baptistry ready. We can do that today if you need. Also, if, maybe if you're a member of our family and you're hurting, you're going through some struggles and you want people to pray for you. You can do that now. Or maybe you have something so great in your life. We want to we want to rejoice with those who rejoice. And maybe you want to come forward and let the family know something great and worthy of praise to our Father that's going on in your life. Whatever it is, you can do that. We're going to have an elder station in the back for anyone that wants to respond privately. Maybe you have something on your heart, but you don't want everybody to know about it. We'll have an elder waiting for you in the back for that. But if you, uh, if you want to make it <coughs> public, <coughs> please come forward. Dave, you're not the only one struggling with allergies. But uh, please come forward if you need to do that. But whatever it is, this is the invitation song that's going to be sang, and you can come forward as we stand and as we sing at this time. Jesus is Lord, my Redeemer. How He loves me, how I love Him. He is risen, He is coming. Lord, come quickly, hallelujah, what a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to 
What a powerful uh, service, church, uh, to just changing the order of one thing impresses upon us the power and the grace and the, the mercy that our Lord has for us through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Just instead of having it in the middle, having it at the end. Um, I'm going to ask... Uh, church members uh, that are able to come forward. We're going to gather around Brother Ronnie. He's, he's dealing with uh, a burden of care. He's dealing with a burden of care. Uh, he has two brothers that aren't, aren't well. Um, Brother Granger is, is, is suffering from the uh, remnants of a stroke, and his brother Ricky is waiting for a heart transplant, and he's, his faith is wavering, and he wants to give up. And so uh, that's heavy on Brother Ronnie's heart uh, this morning. And, and Brother J.D. comes forward asking for uh, prayers for neighbors that are dealing with illnesses uh, and struggles in life and, and infirm health. And so uh, um, we're going to lift uh, these two brothers up in prayer. Um, oh, I'm, I'm sorry.
as, as far as I know, no, um, no prayers have come from online or, or anything like that. But we do have some great news to, to share. Uh, and Donald Coleman and Megan Coleman and Gabriella, where, where are you at? Right there. So they, now, as far as I know, you're members of the church, but you want to place membership here, correct? Amen to that. Amen, amen. amen to that. So excited. <laughs> excited. We're gonna, and we're going to pray about that, too. That's something to be prayerful about and thankful for. People that love us and they want to be part of our membership. They want to be part of our fellowship. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, and uh, we also want to recognize Brother Chris. Uh, he's in the house. Uh, it's good right. to see him. And he looks good. He looks good. He looked good, brother. He looked good. So happy for that. Happy for that. So um, let, let's pray for that. What a great morning. What a great Amen. morning. What a great morning. Uh, so Heavenly Father, we come to you in prayer, uh, just thanking you uh, for all the blessings that you give us. And Lord, we're excited that uh, a family uh, recognizes our love and the truth of our worship in spirit and truth, and wants to be a part of our membership, wants to be a part of our body. They're already uh, Christians, but they're looking for a church home, some place where they can grow and be blessed and, and be active. And so, Lord, thank you for using us in that way. Thank you for letting our light shine uh, because we're faithful and true to you and we're attracting people that want to be part of that. Uh, so wonderful. And we're, we're thankful for Brother Chris uh, being able to travel here, uh, we know he's dealing with a debilitating illness, but he hasn't given up. He, he's not weary. He's still joyful in the Lord, and we're thankful for that, Lord. And, and Lord, I'm going to close us out in our prayer, Lord, uh, for this service. Uh, watch over us, Lord, as we dismiss. Um, keep us safe from the evil one. Help us to be encouraged. Help us to be enriched. Uh, with your love and let our, our light shine and help us to be bold and, and excited about sharing the gospel message. Um, Lord, you're so good to us and we thank you and watch over us and keep us safe to the next appointed time. These things I ask in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, yeah.